All right, so if you've been following the channel for a while, you may or may not know it, but I was trained by one of the leading experts on the subject of FICO, one of the original creators of the Fair Isaac credit scoring model, John Olsheimer, back almost 20 years ago at this point, if not longer, geez Louise, I'm dating myself, also got the opportunity at that time to be certified by Edward Jameson, the nation's leading credit attorney, and became one of a very small number of FICO credit scoring experts at the ripe old age of 23 years old. So I traveled the country, taught all about credit scoring, and even to this day, am still sought after as one of the leading experts on the subject. Some of our most popular videos on this channel are related to credit scoring. So I was really interested to bring you this video today about the Fair Isaac credit scoring model because the question came up, is it the end of the FICO credit score? The FICO credit score was actually introduced back in 1989 and it revolutionized the lending industry by providing the first comprehensive consumer credit score. Prior to their implementation of it, there was really no consistent system based on credit bureau data, resulting in a substantial amount of required to obtain a credit card or there was like a lot of paperwork involved if you wanted any type of loan at all. And FICO has since become uh, ubiquitous with credit scores and it is the most trusted algorithm for a majority of the lending industry. Now that being said, an increased number of lenders are abandoning conventional credit scoring models for assessing credit worthiness and they're instead utilizing alternative measures uh, for making lending decisions. And in today's video, what I wanna do is dive into this new way of assessing you and your credit worthiness and discuss whether it spells doom for Fair Isaac. Stick around. Now to date, lenders have relied on credit reports and scores to determine loan eligibility for everything from mortgages to auto loans and really any other type of loan you can think of. However, due to the limitations of credit scores and advancements, in data analysis, new fintech companies and other organizations out there have emerged now to offer credit to individuals that, that might have been previously excluded. And one such organization is called Pedal. And that's a company that utilizes sources of data other than credit scores to offer credit cards to individuals in need of credit. Pedal uses cash scoring instead of FICO scores to assess your credit worthiness. Now, by analyzing an applicant's financial profile, including their income, spending habits, bill payments, et cetera, Petal believes that their approach is superior to FICO scores as it's a more comprehensive and dynamic evaluation enabling a clearer picture of somebody's credit worthiness, especially during times of market fluctuation and of course, turmoil or, or volatility. For example, Jason Rosen, Pedal CEO and co-founder, he claims that relying on FICO scores alone did not reveal the impact of the pandemic on an individual's financial situation. He says that if you had been on an island without any of the pandemic, you wouldn't have been able to discern the financial struggles of individuals by looking at their their FICO scores in particular. But if you if you could see in real time that people were losing their income streams and not paying their bills, it would be easy to tell that someone was struggling, that there was this extenuating circumstance. And this actually happened during the pandemic. During the peak of the pandemic, the Wall Street Journal reported that numerous banks were unable to accurately determine the credit worthiness of their clients. And that led to situations where they were flying blind so to speak, that's their words. Now, due to the current economic instability that was caused by layoffs and interest rate hikes, banks are reestablishing more stringent credit card lending requirements, which haven't been observed since back in 2008 during the financial crisis. Pedal has begun to allow other financial institutions and fintech companies to use its underwriting technology and their models through their second company, Prism data. The broad interest in using that technology leads Rosen to believe that lenders are becoming more comfortable moving away from their reliance on FICO credit scores. Consumers also seem to be digging what Pedal is doing as Pedal has issued more than $1.5 billion in credit through its Pedal card since 2016. But credit cards isn't the only space being impacted by FinTech newbies like Pedal. Student loans is another area that's seeing some new credit models taking shape. Mpower Financing, which is another fintech company, it's leveraging alternative sources of data to provide student loans, especially to international students that are studying in the United States. Since international students lack social security numbers or credit scores at all, they are usually excluded by traditional credit 
issuing systems. And according to Sash, uh, Sash Romani is Empower's director of strategy. There's no room for nuance with credit scores. It doesn't give a lender a good idea as to uh, how a student will pay back their debts or their loans. If a student has a credit report, we'll look at it. But we don't boil them down to a single number like credit scores, he said. We underwrite based on other factors like work experience, the school that they're studying at, what they're studying. It's a look at the potential of a student's success after graduation. Similar to Rosen, Romani also believes that incorporating supplementary data sources aside from FICO scores will be advantageous for the overall financial system in the long run. With these changes in the way credit worthiness is being determined, does FICO really still have a chance to continue on as the model of choice. It'll be very interesting to see. And although the traditional credit scoring model seems to be losing a little bit of its popularity, some individuals really still, still do believe that it's, it's worthwhile. And John Holzheimer, the very guy I studied under, he's a credit expert formerly with FICO. He believes the FICO system will continue to hold down its ye for years to come as the systems are, are essentially re-engineered every, every few years. It's a lot like, uh, you know, your, your various operating systems. He thinks that it will remain cutting edge. And that said, he also is supportive of, the, of, of utilizing any legal and effective way to make better lending decisions at all. While traditional credit scores really are expected to remain the primary tool for evaluating credit worthiness by many lenders, in the short term, numerous organizations are already constructing hybrid models utilizing alternative data sources. And it's Honestly, it's, it couldn't come soon enough. I don't know what's taking so long. Experian Boost actually is among the, one of the most recognizable. It evaluates a person's recurring bill payment history, other aspects as well to boost their credit scores. We've touched on the fintech companies, Pedal and Empower Financing, but there really are more gaining traction in this area, including X1, uh, Tomo Credit. Even though credit scores continue to be a significant factor in assessing credit worthiness, the, the future really might be uh, changing as more conventional financial institutions and startups begin to leverage the vast amounts of financial data that are available to us at this point in history. And these changes may occur rapidly in the coming years. So we'll be sure to keep our eye peeled for you as uh, you know we continue to make videos, keeping you up to date on all the changes in the credit landscape. Now back to the questions posed at the very start of today's video. Is this the end of FICO credit scores? Well, no. At least not yet, unfortunately. I wish I could uh, see them sort of wiggle their way out with the advancements of technology, but we'll see where things head, folks. I personally have found that because it's reported that at least 80% of uh, viewers even here watching today's video have an inaccuracy reported on their credit reports that may be affecting their scores and even their borrowing strength, it'd be nice to see some improvements on how we can become more eligible and more fairly treated as borrowers moving into the future. Uh, what do you think? Leave your comments below. Have you ever found a mistake on your credit report in the past? What did you do to fix it, if anything at all? Do you have a Credit Karma account? Let me know what your thoughts are of that tool. I personally think it's a great alternative and have not paid for a FICO score in as long as I can think of at this point, many, many years, and I hope you aren't either. Anyhow, folks, look forward to seeing you on the next video. Share your comments below. Until we do see you there, make it a great day today and keep on cash flowing. Take care.